What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about fall bass fishing, finesse fishing, when the bite gets tough, maybe you have some post frontal conditions, but when the bite gets tough, my top techniques to help produce and put more fish in the boat. Fall bass fishing. Guys, real quick before we jump into this video, uh, just know that Matt just did an awesome, I wanna say it's close to three, it might be over three hour long swim bait seminar. But he was one of the orig original guys out on the West Coast throwing those big baits. Just did an in completely in-depth, just uh, mind dump for you guys on swim bait. So we have a whole swim bait seminar coming, so be looking out for that, all right? I mean, everything from soft swim baits to hard swim baits, wake baits, you name it, it's gonna be covered in his awesome swim bait seminar. It's one of those things that uh, you're probably gonna have to pull up the notepad because it's gonna be a lot of information, a lot of great information. Okay, so fall bass fishing is supposed to be, in my mind, reaction time, right? Those fish are active, they're chasing, they're feeding up, you're catching them on top water, swim baits, crank baits, lipless cranks, you're catching them on basically all of your fast moving, quick moving reaction baits, right? It's, it's time to cover water, find those fish that are schooled up, find those fish that are feeding on bait balls, either offshore or maybe they have them pinned to the back of a, a little cut but sometimes that shuts down. You know, like today, it is sunny, uh, post frontal conditions, and had to break out the finesse rods, right? You know, if you guys have followed the channel for this last you know, seasonal transition, you guys know that we do these transition videos. We talked about the transition, we talked about the fall transition, and where these fish are going, what they're doing and the best baits to catch them. And in those videos, it's like 95% reaction baits, right? Alabama rigs, crank baits, top waters, like I said, fast moving baits, jerk baits, crank baits, to, to really tap into those aggressive fish. But when you get days like this, I'm actually tucked in a little pocket because it's super windy, got two footers roll, rollers on the main body. The fish just shut down and that's when you have to, sh uh, to slow down. Unfortunately, with that fall kind of bite, you get those early winter storms. You know, you might get those cold snaps where, you know, typically your lows are in the mid 50s and all of a sudden, boom, it drops down to low 40s and it just really affects those fish uh, they're not used to it, right? It's the, really the first few cold nights, those those cold snaps of the season, of that fall season into winter, and it really shuts those fish down. So finesse fishing is usually the only way I can get bit when that stuff happens. So I have five techniques for you and some, some of my favorite baits that I have in the boat or rigged with me uh, anytime I'm fishing this time of the year. Again, like I said earlier in this video, nine times out of 10, I'm throwing a top water, I'm throwing, uh, I'm speed cranking, I'm throwing an A-rig, I'm throwing a swim bait, you know, something that I can cover a lot of water and really trigger those fish. And then on the flip side, if I have to call timeout, dig in the, rock, uh, the rod locker and pull out some different baits, different rod setups, this is what I'm gonna grab. So, got five of them for you. We'll kinda, we'll kinda go through it one at a time. I'm gonna start off with my first two because they're more like, uh, I mean, they're still finesse baits, but I kinda cheated a little bit and I went with like a finesse underspin. Little 2.8 Kitek, that's our tactical, that's our uh, underspin. Either that Kitek or the little Spark Shad just has two different kicks. So I usually have both uh, ready to be rigged up. Those are my go-tos. And then the Largo Shad. Largo Shad is typically what I'm throwing most of the time, but if I have to downsize, go smaller than like a three inch, I'm going down to like a 2.8. Uh, that's when I'm going down to that finesse underspin. You know, when all else fails, that finesse underspin is just it just is my go-to confidence bait. Like if I'm if I'm calling audible after audible after audible, I can't get them to eat anything. 
I go with this. That is like my ultimate, does this lake suck? Do I suck? Is there fish in this lake bait, right? That's the bait I'm gonna throw to make sure that one, there are fish in the lake, two, I don't suck, and three, it's just one of those days where I have to throw smaller downsize bait. But a finesse underspin, that little, that little, uh, spark shad is a must it's it's such a subtle finesse bait it works really good on the guppy head as well if you don't want to throw a blade you can throw just a single guppy head without that flash i like that flash this time of the year again it really makes that bait stand out from the the actual shad balls that are swimming around but that is my number one if i have to pick one that guy is it okay number two it's not, it kind of is a reaction bait, but not really. I'm going with the spy bait. Those of you guys that aren't familiar with the spy bait, it is a, basically a hard swim bait. It has a propeller on the front. This is the Duo Realis and a propeller on the back and they spin count, like counter, like opposite of each other. So one spins clockwise, one will spin counterclockwise and it, it gives that bait just a real subtle shimmy so it's an ultra finesse bait even though it's a it's a you know it's a hard bait right it's still an ultra finesse bait i'm throwing this on five and six pound uh test i'm actually throwing it on a bfs setup i'll throw five or six pound uh straight fluorocarbon or i'll take like six eight or ten pound braid and then tie a long leader i get a little bit longer distance on my cast throwing that that real small braid but a spy bait is a very finessey, subtle bait. So if I'm fishing, say I'm fishing uh, spotted bass and I'm, I'm chasing a pattern, I'm on a pattern where they're offshore chasing bait, you know, next to secondary points or main lake points. And I'm gonna fish, basically what I'm looking for, I'm looking for areas where they can corral that bait, not necessarily open water. Um, especially in post frontal conditions. I'm looking for uh, areas that are protected by the wind, a little bit warmer, you know, water temps are gonna be a little bit warmer. Maybe that does that cold snap didn't affect those fish as much as it did as the main body when it's got two, you know, two or three footers kind of scenario I'm in today. Uh, you go into these back little cuts, it's somewhat warm, a lot warmer than out there in the wind and the water temps don't crash nearly as bad as the main lake. I'm looking for where those fish have kind of pinned the shad or the bait balls to the back, and then I'm taking this, throwing it out there, counting it down, you know, 10, 15 seconds or so, and then I'm just creeping it back. And this thing is just so subtle, but they eat it. The spy bait is an often overlooked bait, and it works really good if you're a forward-facing sonar guy, it works really good on that. Same with the underspin, but some kind of spy bait. My two go-tos, like I said, that duo, and then the Nishini. This is an awesome little spy bait as well. A little bit bigger profile. You can throw this on a lighter bait caster, if you will. You don't necessarily have to throw these on a spinning rod, BFS setup, but I've caught a ton of big spots on this guy as well. Has a little bit of flash uh, down there on the belly, but these are my go-to uh, spy baits. Again, I'm going with the underspin, I'm going with the spy bait. I'm, again, I'm still, I'm finesse fishing. I'm downsizing my tackle. I'm downsizing my line size. Uh, I'm still kind of going after those active fish. You know, I'm not necessarily dragging on the bottom, which we'll get to, but um, that's where I, that's that's my transition. That's like, those are my, my middleman baits. Those are the in between the, the power fishing and the just ultra finesse dead sticking fish and bottom, right? That's kind of my in between middle of the line baits, uh, the underspin and the spy bait, kind of a one, two punch. The other bait that is a must this time of the, how much, I mean, 12 months out of the year, is some kind of drop shot. Okay, so drop shot baits, there's a million of them on the market. I got three or four that I'll recommend. Uh, you guys know that we've done in-depth, we've done in-depth in -depth videos on all of these techniques, but uh, especially drop shot, uh, but it's all about the tail kick, right? In the winter time, you don't want a bait that has a lot of tail kick in the summer and fall you want a lot of movement you want uh active drop shot baits i really like baits that have well, you can see what i have tied on that's that reins 
real soft, real subtle but active bait. If I give it a lot of twitching, that thing just dances around like a little spastic shad down there. But I like baits that are flat, that have uh, you know, a flat profile and they just kind of drift and kind of, again, we're not getting those reaction bites. We're not fishing super fast. We want those more subtle baits. These guys right here, the X zone, the, uh, the, that's the net bait. That's the flat sided shad. I like them in your shad colors, but more importantly, I like the flatter, more kind of just wavy action. Okay. Same thing with the, uh, the bubbling shaker. This is an awesome, all three of these are awesome fall time uh, drop shot baits. So what I'm using these for, and I come across it all the time, if I'm out fishing and maybe I am catching them, it doesn't matter if it's a post frontal day or not, maybe I am catching them offshore, you know, 30 feet, right? They're coming up from 30 feet, they're coming up and they're blowing up on bait. I'm catching them on whopper ploppers and poppers, walking baits. But as soon as they do their thing, they go back to the bottom. A lot of times on my 2D sonar, I can see that they're down there just hanging off of the bow of the boat, just under uh, my sonar cone off of the trolling motor. I can drop this drop shot straight down and then that you know having that bait suspended off the bottom in their face is just ultra finesse, but it works. They're not, they're not, it's not too much for them. And a lot of times if I'm fishing, this will be my backup bait. So if I'm fishing like a crankbait or an A-rig or a jerk bait or whatever it may be, and I can see those fish fold me to the boat, I can set that rod down, take that drop shot, heavier weight, quarter ounce or so, drop that thing down and it goes right to bottom and you'll see them on the 2D, just follow them straight down. You shake it a couple times, it just loads up and they take off. But a drop shot is a super universal bait. It works when they're active, when it's post frontal conditions and they're shut down. That same scenario where in the back of the cut or maybe you're on a main lake point, fire that thing out there and just drag and shake. Again, that bait's down there just doing that little uh, spastic shad shimmy. <laughs> and uh, those fish just eat it. Even when they don't want to, this, the drop shot is just, that is like the, the ultra finesse, okay? So again, that flat sided shad and the, uh, the finesse slammer, those are great, great drop shot baits. And then the, uh, the reins. You know, if you're a guy that is really um, after or on that shad pattern, throwing some kind of small fluke, that's the little uh, super fluke junior, or even the Z-Man, the jerk shads. That's a another little bait that you can nose hook on like a number one or number two mosquito light hook and send this thing down there and let those fish chew on that on the drop shot, okay? So we got the drop shot done. Kind of taking my baits out of order here. Let's go, um, let's go Senko. Caught fish on this today. The Senko, either weightless, wacky rigged. You can see I have that little, that's a Hayabusa uh, weedless wacky. It's got a fluorocarbon, I don't know if you guys can see that, fluorocarbon weed guard on there. Uh, a lot of times, even if it's post frontal, again, we're talking about the tough times of fall, right? Post frontal conditions, windy, but it's sunny shade, those fish will still pull to docks. And uh, a lot of times those fish are gonna be up underneath the docks. And it is, I mean, besides a jig, a Senko is my number one go-to bait when their fish are up underneath docks. You can skip this thing all the way up there. Let that thing fall on semi-taut line. Have a little bit of a bow in your line and just let that thing fall. A lot of times they'll eat it on that initial fall. If you hit bottom, let it sit there. 10, 15, 30 seconds, pop, pop, let it fall, doop. Again, a non-intrusive bait gets big bites. Uh, I always have a Senko tied on this time of the year, either weightless or a wacky jig head. If I want to fish that same main lake point or I want to fish a little bit deeper, but I still want that wacky rig action, 
we did an underwater video, I think it was last year on underwater stick baits and adding just a little bit of a weight, you know, an eighth ounce or a 16th ounce jig head actually um, amplified or um, just added to the, the, that subtle shimmy, those, those wings flapping on the Senko. Uh, so if you're, if you're fishing a little bit deeper or you wanna fish a little bit quicker, go with a jig head on your on your Senko, your stick bait. My two, I'm gonna give you two colors. Uh, this time of the year, I'm going with natural shad and uh, 297 green pumpkin, black flake. Those are two go-tos. Another good color is a three, 301 or a two, uh, no, 297 is this guy. 301, a 321. I'll link them down below in the video descriptions, but there, there, there's so many different colors on the Yamo Senko. But some, this guy right here, there's a 301 color. Green pumpkin's got some purple copper flake in it, but one of those colors will work. Again, that, that Senko up under those docks, even as a follow-up bait, if you're offshore and they're missing your top water, you take a, a, wack, a wacky rigged natural shad Senko and just let that fall out there. It looks like a dying shad and those fish will come over and eat it as well. But you have to have a Senko. So we got the underspin, we got the spy bait, we got the drop shot, and we got the Senko. That's four. The next one, my fifth bait, it's a toss up, okay? I'm going Ned Rig slash Mini Jig. Okay, you guys, you guys that follow the channel know that I just did a whole in-depth kind of like, a, I don't know, it was like a 40 plus minute video on fall jig fishing and we talked about mini jigs just downsizing basically a downsized jig that still gets big bites okay i'll link my favorites down there but a little mini uh either a missile or uh, a kai tech but some kind of mini jig again you're trying to get bites when those fish are shut down having that downsized profile still allows you to fish the same areas that you would fish with a normal jig. You're just downsizing, make it like a little pocket sized crawdad and they eat it. Okay, that's a little tiny paca on the back. But a mini jig, look at this compared to a Ned rig. Okay, that's that little missile baits. It's not big at all. So I'm giving you guys the option because the mini jig catches them, okay? So if you're a jig fisherman and you're too, you know, you don't want to throw a spinning rod or you don't want to throw a Ned rig, go with a mini jig because it catches them when the full size uh, pitch and jig or a compact pitch and jig just is just too much. On the flip side, we're talking Ned rig, okay? It's pretty hard to get more finesse than than a Ned Rig. If you want some kind of, of action on your Ned Rig, go with the, um, that's the Ned Bomb by Missile Baits. Kind of has that, that tail up there, right? If you want to throw a bait that has less action, go with either the traditional TRD or the Yamamoto. Benefits to both. Last tech, you can catch 20 or 30 fish on one bait. It floats, it's a very versatile bait. Downside, doesn't play well with others, so you have to be very careful with uh, putting these, laying them on your, the deck of your boat next to other soft plastics or in boxes and such. Upside these, they're proven fish catchers, and again, just like any Yamamoto product, they have great colors. So good action, great colors, got electric shad right there. So throwing something on a little net head, I mean, it can be a little tiny jig head, but again, you have to have, this time of the year, you kind of have to have patience with these fish. They will drive you crazy, especially spotted bass. You know, if they're offshore chasing bait, the bait ball, maybe one day the bait balls will be up in the top part of the water column. They're up, up there in that top five feet. You see the boils, you're throwing top water to them. Next day you get the cold, you get the snap, and all of a sudden those, those, those shad balls are down in 30 and 40 feet 
and they're not moving around. So you gotta throw something down there and just kind of drag and shake. Those fish are down there underneath those, those balls of bait. They're still hanging with them. They're just not as active. A, uh, a Ned rig is an awesome, awesome uh, way to just drag. Again, it's that one-two punch, that drop shot Ned rig. And if you're on a crawdad fisher, you're not necessarily fishing for, for shad eaters. Go with the uh, TRD bugs, little little craw profile that you can put on your Ned rig, and it doubles great as a trailer on the mini jig, okay? That is my five finesse baits for when fall fishing gets tough. Now, one other one I want to talk about real quick. This doesn't apply to everybody, but it's a super fun way to catch them, and it's been really popular lately. We're talking about mid-strolling, whatever you want to call it, basically a ball head, eight ounce, 16 ounce uh, ball head with your favorite fluke style bait. This is actually the jerk shads like I talked about earlier. Okay, little fluke works well too, but this is a bait that is primarily for you forward facing sonar guys. If you're looking for a bait that you can hang over their head and shake, you get real aggressive with the shake. It's become really popular the last year and a half or so. Just get really, really aggressive with that rod tip and that bait's going side to side, shimmying side to side right above those fish. You're watching them on your forward facing sonar. Above them, they just have to come up and eat it. Uh, again, if they're not chasing, and you, you know, you say you're spot locked and you just see that shad ball and the fish are just sitting below it and they're not doing anything, taking something like this, got some grass on here, and just holding it above their head and shaking uh, works magic. It's a newer technique to me. A lot of guys are talking about it. A lot of money's been won on it lately, but it is an awesome way to catch them. So if you guys are into that forward facing deal and you like to video game fish, play that game with something with that right there, okay? That is called uh, mid-strolling, okay? Guys, that is it. That is my lineup. You know, I might have a couple different baits. Can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but uh, that is my lineup. That's my fall finesse lineup all the way basically through winter. I'll slow down quite a bit in winter if I'm finesse fishing, but um, kind of is what it is. For the most part, I'm throwing those reaction baits. I'm throwing those fast moving baits, but if those aren't working, I'm going with the underspin, going with the spy bait, the drop shot, the Senko, the mini jig, or the Ned rig. That's it. As simple as uh, possible. Down below in the, video, uh, in the video description, I will link my favorite two or three baits for each of the techniques that I talked about. But guys, throw those reaction baits, throw those top waters, those crank baits, those A rigs, and when the time gets tough, switch to these baits, and you guys will actually catch fish when the climate, the conditions just stinks. Guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.